Hello, beautiful people. Honest I am here, the creator and writer of the Honest Thesis newsletter, a bi weekly newsletter geared towards millennials who are truly trying to get their shit together. And I am here for another daily motivational video where we do tarot to become the alchemist of our lives and teach us how to become spiritual beings. A little bit about me I do not just use a tarot, I use God and Cousins in the same sentence, and I may mispronounce some things, but if it does not stop showing me to God, it will not stop me. So I miss you guys. I hope you have been well. Um, I definitely wanted to give you something to end the year with. So here we go. All right, God, guardian, angel, and ancestors, what information do you have for us? Thank you for being ready for us at this time. Please deliver these messages to me and God bless by Asha. All right, let's just do two cards. I don't know if for doubt or confusion. All right, perfect. The two cards that came out is Awakening and Birth. Um, and right away, <laughs> the message that I kind of get from this is that we are about to go through this process. Um, well, it's not even that we're going through this process. I talk about this a lot on the channel, but um, we are uh, birthing a new age. Uh, I feel like 2021, we were in the middle of like just starting that process. Um, I'm really curious. Um, I'm having an event, my very first event. Well, not my very first event, probably my second event for honestly, sis. Um, I'm challenging myself to do a, a first quarter of se event, a series, an event series for honestly, sis this year. Um, and I have a black astrology for a black astrologer for the very first one. And I actually have an idea for what I want the name of it to be, but I want to talk to her about it. And I also want to talk to her about the Aquarius age and like, what does that mean? And what does 2022 mean? So if you're interested in that, make sure that you are signed up with honestly, sis.com. Make sure that you are on the mailing list, not subscribe to my website because the website, you get all the information as it's posted and nine times out of 10 is posted like a month later. Um, everybody that's on my mailing list is going to get first come first serve and the places are going to be limited. But I say all that to say is that you're probably right now in a process of awakening. I think a lot of people look at awakening and they, you know, we make it seem like crazy and the end of the craft where Nancy was screaming. Um, but, and it can be, like, <laughs> there can be parts of when the awakening process can be very difficult and challenging, but it's being, it's difficult and challenged because you're in the process of, uh, thinking about, uh, life, like totally different. Um, I was watching the matrix again recently and I love it because it's like, now I can see it from this different, this different lens. Um, and I think about that process of when Neo was, you know, they found him in that tube and they took all those, you know, they took all the, t off, all the, uh, holes off of him. And then they had him on that table and they were reconstructing his, reconstructing his body. And he was like, why does my eyes hurt? And angel number 307, um, he said, because this is your first time seeing. And I feel like that's kind of what awakening is. It's like, you get frustrated. And the reason why, you feel like what the fuck is because it's your first time understanding life and understanding how, how yourself in relation to life. Uh, a practical way to get you to understand that personal example would be when I realized, and I think I have a couple of articles on Honestly Sis about this. It's probably like a series of articles on Honestly Sis. And I think it starts with uh, the thing about love. Um, when I realized that my relationship and, and, and for a long time I was in denial about my relationship with my father, let's just give you some background. Let's talk about myself for a minute. I grew up being a daddy's girl. Um, I used to tell people all the time, like I love my dad, my dad, you know, like I'm a daddy's girl and all my family around me used to call me dad, right? So I used to look like my dad, all of that stuff. Um, but as I grew older, um, I want to say like maybe it was like a year or two after I graduated college and I was into my corporate career. Um, one night I had this dream and I was being chased by these men and like my life was on the line and the guys was like, you know, they chased me to my dad's house, uh, my grandma house technically. Um, and, but I knew my dad would be there. Um, my dad opened the door. He lets me in. The guys come to the house like they're all around guns out and they like put her out the house or we gonna shoot it up. And my dad pushed me out the house. Um, and I remember waking up and just being like, damn, like my daddy doesn't love me. Like I remember calling my mom and just like bawling like my dad doesn't love me. My dad doesn't love me. 
Um, but I think that was my soul, like my, and that's why I'm saying like every year in your body, God, dreams are always talking to you. But I feel like that was like my soul way of waking me up to the reality of the situation. I realized I'm the type of person that can, once I get my mind set on how a certain situation is, it's like I can just put rose colored glasses on and I all only see what the fuck I want to see. Um, and it was like my soul was like, it forced me to wake up and see the truth of my relationship with me and my dad. And when I started to have that realization about, you know, my dad really not being there for me, my dad really, you know, kind of being uh, at the center of a lot of my first heartbreaks and just not really being a parent to me at all. But yet, you know, I'm not going to go down that road, but yet wanting so much for me. Um, but anyways, uh, so I had that real, I had that dream and then it was like, from that dream, I couldn't unsee what I saw. You know, it was like it, the reality, like I was able to see the physical manifestations of it. And I started to feel it in my body. And then I realized like, oh, this event that happened to me as a kid, this thing that my dad did to me, literally my whole, the reason why I didn't choose to become an actress, the reason why I never went to California, it was because of this one thing that happened that my dad did to me when I was 13 years old. And I remember being so frustrated because I'm like, that's so fucked up. Like, I never even had a fucking chance because what does a 13 year old know about life? But what we don't realize is that when we're two years old, when we're begging for our parents to pick us up and all, that is literally the way that our parents treat us for the first one or four years of our life. Literally, like, I want you to really think about this because that may be your awakening. That literally molds your friendships, how you feel about yourself, your self-esteem, how ambitious you would be, how you would think you can go after your dreams. All of that shit is built on that first one to four years. And then if your parents continue to not nurture it or all that other stuff, it's like you can be fucked up. It really makes sense why a lot of kids is fucked up. Like I heard this one story, very random tangent, but I heard this story. I listened to this podcast called Sisters Who Kill that talks only about black women who murder. And it was about these two kids that end up killing a mama. And it was like, I understand it. You know, like, I I understand it's like, that's fucked up to say. But it's like, at 13, like, they, they got charged as an adult at like, 14, like 16, 17. You don't know what the fuck you're doing at 16, 17. But anyways, I digress. Your parents, how your parents treat you is going to dictate how you move in your world. And it's like when you realize that that fundamental relationship was fucked up and so henceforth, you know, you had all this fucked up shit to do, it feels unfair because it's like, damn, like I never had a chance. Like <laughs> I just literally never had a chance coming out the womb because of who my parents was. But the beauty of the awakening process is no, it's actually so much more amazing that you could realize like, oh, this happened to me as a kid, but I don't have to keep acting like that anymore. I can make this choice to change. I can birth a new way of being. I can be a different type of person. I feel like that's what God is trying to get you to understand about these hard revelations that you may be experiencing during this time of the year. Maybe you may be realizing like, damn, like I do all this stuff for other people and people are not there for me or I did all this stuff for my job and my job is not there for me or I did all this stuff for this degree and I don't even want this motherfucker. Like that's an awakening. And what you do with your, your awakening dictates what type of person you will birth, who you will be after that moment of awakening. So many people, I think why they end up in depression and, you know, just letting their life go is because so many of so many of us have these awakenings of like, damn, I didn't even have a chance. And then we just think that's it. You know, like we just like, oh, I never had a chance. So why the fuck keep trying instead of just being like, I never had a chance. But damn, that's kind of amazing. And I realize this now, if all I got to do is change my mindset, let me work on changing my mindset. <laughs> and remember 9-11. And then maybe if I can change my mindset, maybe then I can change my life. But we don't think about it like that. We just had an awakening, feel the pain, and then try to bury it instead of birthing a new type of way of being. I love that message. Let's understand what God is trying to say to us by getting the tool to get us in the vortex. Let's see what God is, what this message is all about. God, clarify this message of awakening and birth. What are you trying to get us to understand about taking these, mo these painful moments, these painful moments of awakening to birth a new way of being, a new way of thinking, a new way of, of, of moving? I think one of my biggest awakenings that I had this year was that I've been chasing love my whole life. 
Like, my whole life. Like, everything I have done, like, it's been because I've been trying to fill this hole of my parents and fill this hole of, you know, like, just emptiness that I feel. Like, because when you're a parent, that's your core relationship. When they treat you like shit or, like, you don't matter, you go and try to seek, find that validation elsewhere. And so everything has been about trying to find that validation elsewhere and when you operate that way, the world sees that and they can take from that. And it's not because you're powerless or you deserve it. It's because you don't even know you have power. You don't even know that you have this great light because you're just easily giving away or you're just asking like, please, somebody come to me. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Awakening and birth. God, clarify what you're trying to get us to understand about these painful awakenings. Oh, what I was saying was... Um, when I realized that, you know, I've been chasing love my whole life, it also made me understand like why I was having the type of relationships that I was having in, because I realized going back to what I was saying before I was walking around with this desperate energy. I was walking around with, well, what can I do for you? And how can I get you to love me? How can I get you to stay with me? Instead of realizing that I'm a prize on my own, like who I am, how I look, how I talk, how I dress. Like it's not even about, and low key, it's not even about the physical. It's about how I love, like, you know, how I love, how I think, what, what I believe a relationship will be. And now when I had that revelation that I was chasing love, I could have been like, well, damn, I'm 33. That means I'm not going to ever have love again. No, I had that revelation that I was chasing love and I made a vow that I would never chase love again. That I would never put myself in situations that betray me again. And that's what God is trying to get you to understand these awakenings. The whole reason why he has you having these heartbreaks and these things, these, you know, these things that irritate you in your life is because he's trying to birth a new way of being within you. And sometimes the only way that you can even get to that new person, be motivated to become that new type of being is because of the pain that you are experiencing. So what God is saying is don't run from the pain. Listen to it. Lean into it. Run towards it because it's trying to awaken you to a new way of being. All right, God. Oh, I love that. Woo, woo, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I don't know. Just add chills thinking about that. That was so, I love it. It's so romantic, God. I, I've been so into rom I don't know. I got my nails. I'm like, oh, this is so romantic. I, that's just been my worry lately because that's what I realized. Like, I just want to be romance. Like, not just in my relationships, but with life. Like, I, and when I, when I say I want to be romance in life, that means I want to love everything I want to do. I want to love the interactions that I have, the people that I make, the businesses that I do, the work that I put out. Like, I just, I want to be in love with life. And I realize I do. You know, I do what I love majority of the day. I do, I, I walk around as a romantic. I walk around craving connections and real life interactions with people. And you know what? Age of number 13, 13, because I do that, the world gives back to me. I always have like this, I, you know, I have a horrible relationship with my mom, but I always, when I'm out in public, it's like God will send me like these, I'm getting kind of emotional just thinking about it like these black mama moments, you know? Um, this one day uh, I had a plan when I told y'all about going to get my, going to get my coat. And I like, I was like, you know what? I'm a really, I, I washed my face. I put my little, you know, drew my eyebrows in, put me a little eyeliner. Like I'm like really made an effort to like walk out the house. And this black woman, this older black lady, like we were just walking down the aisle, you know, she was telling her granddaughter something. And she just looked at me, she said, oh, your face is so pretty. Oh, you got a gorgeous face. And I was just like, thank you. And you know they mean it because they don't say it if they don't mean it. So I was just like, oh, and it was just like, it, it felt like God was like validating me in that moment. And like, I don't know, I could tell you so many stories about like, you know, just older black women just coming through for me, just out in the world, like putting me on game, like make sure you have a Target Circle app because I always got discounts and, you know, stuff that a mom would normally teach you. But, you know, I'm learning it from others. And I feel like, you know, this is a tangent Angel number 1432, but I genuinely feel in my heart that like I'm still going to have that mothering energy that I've always wanted. I, I, I genuinely feel like God is going to send me a God mom, a real God mom, like a fair, you know, like a real soul mom that can help guide me to my next leg of my journey, help me navigate, you know, becoming a mom myself because, 
you know, success leave clues. You got to be a student to success. And I want to be successful in every area of my life, including being a mom, especially because, you know, I don't have the best <laughs> you know, example. Anyway, so for this card of awakening and birth, what came out is my imagination attracts all cooperative relationships. The universe and all physical and non-physical players in it is responding to the vibrations that you offer. And no distinction is made between vibration that you offer as you observe and vibrations that you offer as you imagine. Let's pause. So I told you guys, engine number 1531, that as we may be ending up wrapping up this new year, um, holiday times, you may be seeing, you know, people with their family, you know how niggas do. People with their families, people getting engaged, all of these feelings are coming up. All of these awakenings are coming up. And what God is telling you this time around, don't shy from the pain. Don't shy from the sting. Ask it what it's trying to tell you and go down that rabbit hole of that new awakening. So, for example, I wake up and I see somebody got engaged. Damn, I'm by myself. All I got is a tree and a dog <laughs> with matching pajamas. Damn, like I want that. Let's explore what that will feel like. I want that. I want to have a husband. I want, oh my God, that would be amazing to wake up with my fiance or wake up to my boyfriend and he does this big elaborate thing to where he surprised me and he proposed to me and then we go and have dinner or, you know, go and have brunch with our family or he surprised me with, the, you know, or our friends, whatever. It's like, Take the disappointment, take the shit you're seeing and go and create your fantasy. Because what this card is trying to get you to understand is that as you are creating that fantasy in the world, it's going to birth something new. And this is why it's going to birth something new. If you will simply imagine your life as you want it to be, all cooperative components will be summoned. And even more important, all components that are summoned will cooperate. It is law. The experience you have with others is about how you evoke them. So what God is trying to tell you is that these awakenings, like I was telling you, these disappointments is here to birth something new. But if you choose not to birth something new, if you choose to act like it, it's not even a big deal, you'll never become the person that you want to be. So I just challenge you that during this holiday season, during the end of this year, whenever the fuck you see this video, if you feel pain or you find yourself being triggered, I want you to ask why. And then I want you to go on the other side of that why instead of going down a negative road, because we all know how to do that. I challenge you to say, but what if? But what if this was me? So you see somebody um, just got talk about, oh my God, oh, this is a really good example. You see somebody just talk about how they got a TV deal. And you like, Mama Tina, Mama Tina literally have my dream show like i have I, I wish i could show y'all my dream journal and show how i wrote this down with guests to everything and then mama tina manifested it <laughs> and i was just like damn mama tina got my show and i like at first i was like really salty and then i just played with it i was like i gotta become famous i gotta hurry up i'm like see god this is why i need this this is why i need a platform so that i can do shit like this you know Angel number 1830, like, it's like, take that moment and just change it and tell God, see, this is why I want it. Um, last night when we were uh, listening to Jay-Z and Alicia Keys and they were having that conversation and Jay said, I don't want to get spiritual. And the Alicia went super spiritual. And I'm like, but see, God, that's why I want to have a television show. That's why I want to have my own whatever the fuck, because... I want to have those conversations. I want to give those type of people that we've only seen in a certain type of light space and womb to talk about that type of shit and for me to ask questions and for me to learn selfishly, you know? But anyway, so God is saying is like you, but you can use these in the moments. If you take these moments of disappointments to fuel you to birth something new, then that's how you get closer and closer to the life that you need to go to need that you want to become, you know, you get closer and closer to your dreams because you're facing your fears, you're facing those, you're facing those, those pains, and then you're telling it, no, I want something else. And then you're going out there and you're becoming that something else, okay? All right, so the message for today is don't run from none of your disappointments. Instead, challenge yourself to see what is this disappointment telling me? What do I want? What is this telling me that I desire? And then have fun with thinking about how to bring that into your life. 
last message i can always enter my vibrational vortex of creation and that's why god is trying to tell you that it doesn't matter if your life been fucked up for the last 30 years the last 40 years the last 50 years it doesn't even matter like honestly lately what i've been telling myself is that sam jackson didn't make it until he was 40. he didn't get his first fucking role until he's 40. i'm like i'm 33 i got fucking time you know so it's like we got to change our fucking mindset. And that's why I'm so excited about this new year, about these series that I'm having for Honestly Sis, because I'm getting, I don't care. Like I told y'all, I'm seeing, I am so fucking serious about changing my life and I want to do it with y'all. I want to do it with accountability um, and having a good fucking time, building community, doing, doing it. My manifestations are an indicator of my belief. Last thing I want to let you guys know, um, that's just saying that the life that you're living is a, is an indicator of what you believe to be true about yourself. So if your life hasn't been ain't shit for a while, that means somewhere deep down inside, you don't feel like shit. You know, you don't feel like you don't you don't feel like you got it. But the beauty of life is that you can easily change it. You can change your mind. You can change your mind any given time. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. I feel like that a card just disappeared on me. Where did that card go? All right, God. Let's get on out of here. Clarify this message of awakening, birth. My imagination attracts all cooperative relationships. God, what do you want to give us to understand about um, <clears throat> allowing moments of pain to awaken new things to us? What do we? Uh, what do you want us to get to under us to understand about awakening, awake pain, awaken us to um, a pain? Pain awaken us to a new way of being. I don't know, guy. I, I probably did. I probably fucked it up, but you know my heart. <laughs> Make it as clear as possible. In God name, I pray. I say. This is how I talk to God. I, this is how I talk to God all the time. You know my heart, guy. You do. You know I love you. One more. If we're not gonna get a popper, I'll take the card that is on the top. But we did get a popper. Uh, the two cards that came out, I'm not going to focus on this card. Soul family calling your tribe. You don't have to do it alone. It's so funny that in this message, I spoke a lot about, you know, my ill relationship with my mom, but I'm learning that, you know, just because I have fucked up relationship with my family, it doesn't mean that I'm going to have fucked up relationships forever. As I become better, everything around me become better. Um, another message that came out is the great gathering. It's all coming together. Intuitive hits. So tribe double confirmation that, um, as we work on ourselves, as we allow those moments of awakening, of those moments of awakening to birth a new way of being, we'll call into our soul fam and our soul, uh, our soul family and our soul tribe. Also, I feel like what God is saying is that, say, for example, you awaken to the truth that you don't like your job. This is some bullshit. You don't want to do this no more. I don't care if you've been doing it for 10, 15 years. You have this little hustle that you've been doing for the last year. You're like, this is what I really want to do. God is saying, if you just focus on birthing that thing and just allowing, you know, your job to just fall away, like we need jobs. Let's be real. We all got bills, so we can't just be jumping out of the window. But what God is saying is that as you are putting your attention, putting your intention, attention and intention on birthing this new business, birthing this new way that you want to operate in the world, you're going to attract all the resources and the things that you need to you. Okay. Thank you, God. But the message that we're going to focus on is the crumbling. What are you clinging to? Angel number 23. <laughs> I lost it. We're going to let that go. The crumbling. This look kind of creepy. But I also really like it because it looks like, uh, it's like with this awakening, it's like you, it, it hurts for a while. It looks dark. It looks scary. But if you look at this card a little bit closely, you see all of this, the, the exterior looks dark. And um, it looks dark and stormy, but it's like as soon as you walk across the threshold, it's like light. And I feel like that's why we get so much propaganda in the world. That's why we see, you know, mass shootings, all of that stuff happening because it's want to show you like, oh, it's so bad. It's so terrible. Because if you go inside, if you choose to only live by you, it's nothing but eternal life. It's nothing but abundance waiting for you. But let's go to the cards and figure out what this message has to say to us. The Kremlin. I've never pulled this card before. So good. Uh, that lets me know that we are angel number 40. We are. I love this. We're moving forward, setting new foundations, shifting different type of energy. So this is all very good for us. And the reading goes as follows. There is a shift happening right now where anything inauthentic can no longer survive. 
Relationship, jobs, social structures, anything built on shaky ground is destined to crumble trum down. It's, <clears throat> I'm just going to leave this. Y'all know the card that we're looking at, right? I'm going to start over. The crumbling. What are you clinging to? What are you clinging on to? There is a shift happening right now where anything inauthentic can no longer survive. Relationship, jobs, social structures, anything built on shaky ground is being destined to tumble down. It's happening to bring you back home to who you truly are, both individually and to society as a whole. So you can live a life that is in alignment with who you truly are. When you are in the thick of it, it can feel like a personal attack from the universe. Have faith because the difficult times will be your defining moments. You will be re re reborn in the fire. You are being called to surrender, to stop trying to hold it all together, to loosen your grip, to let the crumbling occur. It may be difficult at first, but in the end, the sooner you let go, the sooner the rebirthing will occur. What you are trying, what are you trying to hold on? What are you trying to hold together? What are you doing your best to avoid? How are you are trying? <laughs> Let me start over. I'm sorry. I kind of got messed up because the birth and the rebirth. I'm like, whoo, confirmation. But let's let me just reread the sentence for you. You are being called to surrender, to stop trying to hold it all together, to loosen your grip, to let the crumbling occur. It may be difficult at first, but in the end, the sooner you let go, the sooner the rebirthing will occur. What are you trying to hold together? What are you doing your best to avoid? How are you trying to pretend everything is okay? You have what it takes to allow what is falling away to tumble and fall. Once the tower has crumbled, you will be able to rebuild your home on solid ground with mighty foundations and a view that is so magnificent that it will take your breath away with each new, new moon. With each new moon, Kali, the goddess of destruction, and the Black Madonna are with you now. Lay it all on their altar, on their altar, they can hold it all. What are you clinging to for the fear nothing will come to take its place? Woo! That is deep. That is deep. So I want to say that one more time. This, I really feel like for a lot of us, maybe within these next one or two weeks, you're going to have some type of awakening that is going to challenge you to birth a new way of being. I really can't wait to have this conversation with my girl and seeing and wondering if this has to do with anything about the Aquarius age. Um, but during these next uh, one or two weeks and maybe this next month, maybe the first quarter of this year, what your biggest question is going to be, what are you clinging to for fear of nothing coming to take its place? Is it relationships? Is it your job? Is it even your car? The question is up to you. What are you going to do? All right, y'all. That is all the messages I have for you. If you made it to the end of this message, angel number 2808, please give me a thumbs up. If you made it to the end of this message, you are not subscribed. What are you waiting for? Until we meet again, dream those dreams. Never let the internet rest you and never, ever let someone tell you what you cannot do. Namaste. See you soon.